So today we're going to be talking about the obedient plant. And the reason why we're talking about obedient plant is because it's a native plant in my area. So I'm in Southern Ontario, but obedient plant is native to a big chunk of North America from about Manitoba all the way across to Quebec, down through the States and into the Northern part of Mexico. So it's really happy where I live. And so the reason why I'm focusing on native plants today in this video is because I'm trying to get more native plants into my suburban garden. And that is for a couple of reasons as well. So one of the reasons is, is that native plants just tend to be more resilient to your area. They are adapted for your climate. They're happy with your sun conditions, your rain conditions, just for your seasonality. And so they tend to need less attention. And the more a plant needs less attention from me, the better. The more I can just let it do its thing and be happy in the garden, the more I, I can do other things in my life as well. And so another reason why you might want to grow more native plants in your garden is because they are good for the natural ecosystem. They're, they keep the, the pollinators in your area happy, they keep the plants and birds in your area happy, and even might be res resistant to some of the bigger animals that might eat your plants, such as those bunnies or deer if you have deer in your area. So now I'm going to give you a bit of a close-up of the obedient plant, tell you why it's called the obedient plant, and show you some of the pollinator action that's been going on in my garden today. So the reason why this is called obedient plant is because if you move the flowers, you can actually put them wherever you like and they will stay wherever you move them. Just like that. They're also called false dragon head because if you look at the front of the flower, it looks a little bit like a dragon's mouth opening up. And that's where the little insects will go, right into the dragon's mouth. Oh, you almost got that right there. So before I go on to tell you a little bit more about why obedient plant works so well with my suburban garden, I just wanted to give you a close up of just how busy this plant really is. Every single day, it gets tons of visits from bees and wasps and butterflies and even hummingbirds. And really it is the busiest plant in my garden by far and the busiest plant I've ever actually seen for pollinators. So the reason why I chose obedient plants specifically for my garden was really because it's a pollinator friendly plant. It attracts the bees and the butterflies and the hummingbirds. It has tons of these beautiful blooms all over each of the bloom stalks. And really it blooms from about August into early fall. So September, October. So there's a long blooming time. And so really this has a lot of action throughout the whole later part of the summer. You can see that the plant grows to about three or four feet tall. And really, I had a small little group that I planted a few years ago, and it's done its own thing. It's spread through its rhizomes and roots in the ground, and then it also can drop seed and, and then pro proliferate like that. And so if you don't want it to have lots of volunteers all over your garden, then you might want to deadhead the plant after the blooms have faded. So I'll be giving you a video about that later, but for now, we're just talking about the plant and sharing some of its unique qualities in hopes that maybe you might find this helpful as well for your garden. And if not, hopefully you can look into some other native plants for your gardening to help you have an easy garden that's beautiful as well. 